Hey Stampers, this is June Lucal. I miss you. I just wanted to show you how to make this card real quick. Um, this is in honor of Lynn Hubach. Um, she never wanted to do with sympathy or any kind of sympathy cards. She didn't want anyone to have sympathy for her. Well, maybe she did. I don't know. But she didn't want to do sympathy cards and remind her, you know, of everything that was going on. So I decided it was time. Um, I wanted to do a couple things. She always liked the word pool party, that color. Um, and so I wanted to use that. Um, I think her favorite color was green. I think she liked this granny apple green. So between all that, I thought, let's do it. This would also uses the set called Healing Hugs. And this actually I bought with her in mind. Um, now it's she's passed on May 15th. Um, she'll always be in my heart. But at least I can make this card. The words with sympathy come from this one. Flourishing phrases, which unfortunately is discontinued. All right, let's get started. All right, so like I said, I'm using Pool Party. Um, I'm also using um, this... Uh, DSP stack that was the in colors from last year and I believe that's been discontinued too um, so that is this paper so first of all here we go get our little supplies together um, all right hopefully you remember that all right so we have pool party we're gonna fold that in half and then I have a trick for you. All right. Um, all right. So we put our tape. I want an easy way to attach this ribbon. And you know, uh, it's so skinny unless you have just the right adhesive, but I have a trick for you. So I'm going to put my, my double stick tape right about where the bottom edge of that ribbon would go. All right. And then I'm going to put that and I made it a little bit big for you. But I'm going to put that right there on the edge of that tape. So you see some of it's still sticky, but that's okay because I'm planning to put that there. I'm also going to put, because I don't really know where the top edge of this, so I'm just going to put it directly onto the paper instead of guessing where that goes. And then put that here, right up against it. Okay, now I, th mm, I think I just did about right about there. Now this side's going to need trimming, and I think it's easiest to go from the inside. Now, my scissors were not cutting the ribbon. My paper snips were not cut the ribbon very good. So I have my sewing scissors here. All right. And then let's use the paper snips again because I don't want to use my good sewing scissors on the paper. All right. Okay. So here we go. Here we have the background. Now, um, this is the granny apple green. And if you remember, um, we do the little t um, tail kind of thing by cutting up a little bit in the center and then going from each corner to that. All right, and I know I've got my eczema is flaring so badly right now. <sighs> I've just got all these bandages on me. Um, all right, then the next thing, um, so that will go right here. So you can put tape there. And that'll go here. You can overlap the ribbon a little if you want, up to you. Um, all right, now we're gonna do the flower and the, um, words here okay to do the flower this is the little technique i wanted to show you too so i'm using pool party now this is using the new distinctive ink distinctive stamp that is um being patented right now by the by stampin up now i'm kind of not thrilled with how the center is not was not coming out real well i could probably take a sponge dauber and add more ink or maybe a darker shade of ink that might help it a lot too, but I decided I'm going to just um, help it out a little with some colored pencils. 
which I'm not sure what I did with. All right, so you see how the outsides, the outside edges look great, but the inside's a little pale. So I'm going to, oh, found the green one. Um, yep, there it is, okay. All right, so I'm using Bermuda Bay because it's pretty close. Um, now, kind of like having this to look at now. All right, so if you look at some of these darker areas, all right, this is what you want to kind of aim for. Um, and all right, so I'm going to probably go for this one first because I can see that that is, you see what I'm doing? Just color lightly. You can always add more, all right? Barely touching the paper and rub that over it. So see, that's starting to stand out. Uh, where are some other parts? Here are some. Kind of making it match the outside here, isn't it? All right, so here we go. Some of it's a little bit of just practice playing around. Nice thing is um, this does erase a little bit. So if you do completely flub up something, you can you can fix it generally. All right, and if you're coloring lightly, you, you, my tell, tell my younger students um, do it light till you get it right. Draw it light till you get it right. All right. Let's see, just a little extra pressure in the darker areas and ease up a little bit. So in here, it's a little hard to tell what's going on. And that's where you might want to refer to the top of the stamp set. See, it looks pretty dark in the middle, isn't it? Especially right here. And you can always... Sharp pencils are really important, too. Make sure you keep it sharp. Dull ones just... You know, they work, but they're not as good. All right. So... Um, here we go. Looking better, isn't it? Now, these are watercolor pencils. we That's the nice thing about these color pencils is you can use them as color pencils. You can use them to put down the color and then use your aqua painter to um, make them like watercolor paint. That's always nice. You could color really hard in one spot on a piece of paper or and then use it as kind of your watercolor source, as if you're, you know, scribbling on one part and then you take your pen and you, you know, remove it and put it in a different place. But that's not what we're doing here. We are just using these as basic color pencils. All right, I know I'm doing this a little bit fast for you. I'm trying to show you what I'm talking about. Kind of doing a Bob Ross moment here. Happy trees. All right. Let's see. So I want to go every so often you might want to go back and you just like kind of step back and look at it. Make sure that Overall, there's the same amount of dark spots versus light spots. So see, I don't want to miss anything. There's some dark spots here and here and here, here, here. It's pretty well balanced, actually. Um, and you can play around with it more and more and more. It's, it's up to you. But do you step back and make sure you haven't missed anything terrible? You know, big areas that you just didn't get to. But otherwise, this looks pretty decent, better, more defined. And you can always go back and, you know, define more things a little bit darker here and there. All right, then you can cut it out. I am gonna cut it out, the fussy cutting, right at the edge. No border on this one, but you can if you want.
I this is my second video ever. So I don't know how to fast forward yet. Working on things though. Baby steps, right? Almost there. Um, surprising how much your other hand actually is involved for cutting. Alrighty, there we go. All right, so how, here we have the flower. All right, now we need some leaves. So we're gonna use the granny apple green. I hope I even I'll have to go back and make sure that was even in the view. I wasn't even paying attention. All right. Um, here we go. We're going to stamp that right there. And then we don't need this anymore. Here's my green. Because I did that other one, I'm going to try to make it the same kind of look. This one in front is much later. I don't know that it needs to be that much later. All right, that's a little bit of bit of help. All right, and then we need, with sympathy, using pretty peacock because that's the color I used in the background. All right, so here we go. Oh, I forgot to cut the little tail part. All right, I will do that. I hope that's not crooked. Ah, not bad. All right. Now, do that cut up at the center a little bit. And then... All right. to attach that there that looks good all right let's put some tape on that put some this way there all right now let's put some dimensionals on this my mini dimensionals um yes Jill I'm doing this all over the place sorry All right, let's put this guy on. Don't know why a rose is a guy, but hey. Um, take the little things off. All right, here we go. We'll put that on right there. All right, one more thing. I wanted to add some droplets, okay? And... Um, Here's my tea pin. All right, so these are these epoxy droplets. And I, you know, I do a rule of three and I didn't want to do too many because I really like this is all I have right now. So, uh, and I still have to divide it up for you guys. So I'm going to put one big droplet, like a bit of dew on this leaf. And then I'm going to put another little one. And I debated if I wanted to put them all on the roses and it didn't quite look right. So I'm going to put another one. I don't know. I think I put that something like that. It's got a buddy. And then let's put another one as if it fell off the rose as a tear, maybe. Okay. And then I have three and it's not overpowering the rose. I could put a million on one there. It'd probably look great, but I don't have a million, obviously. So, um, all right. So here is my original. Oh, it's pretty close. Same. All right. Well, I hope you enjoy um, that. And I'm sorry it took so long to get to it. Um, but the Calyx just came. So I figured I was already late. Might as well do it all at once, right? 
So um, hopefully you enjoy the new catalog. There's lots of cool stuff in it. And I hope that we can continue the stamp club. Um, I think we'll, we'll have to see. Um, I hope to hear back from people anyway. Okay. But regardless, here you have this last project um, that I promised and a little bit of personal touch here for you. And um, otherwise, stay well. All right. Thanks.